Wa ha 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 sail beautiful Taurus. Taurus and the collective energy of Taurus is bonkers busy. So you've got the sun in Taurus until the 21st of May. It's at 15 degrees and until, from the 6th. And then by the end of May, it will be at nine degrees of Gemini. So there's something in that energy itself of the sun offering some kind of outer body, outer world physical space. Um, mm, what do I want to say? It's, it's kind of giving you an opportunity that's moving towards a solution as you see the missing piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Then you have Mercury retrograding 8 degrees to 15 degrees because it's retrograding and then it shifts and comes back the other way. Mercury can be very zippy. So then you have Jupiter 27 degrees of Aries, but it's moving into Taurus on the 17th of May. There's something about an energy of opulence coming towards you. And then Uranus, Gaia, is at 18 degrees to 20 degrees of Taurus during May. Vesta is at nine degrees, moving to 20 degrees. So Vesta's catching up for a conjunction at the end that's interesting. Changing thresholds is what I'm hearing. Changing your brightness. And then we also have good old Sedna still sitting there on 29 degrees. Remember, Sedna has a long elliptical orbit that takes 10,000 odd years to go around. And so since it was discovered, we've not really witnessed it in any signs other than Aries really but in July in July mm, hang on where is it it's in about 50 years it will come to its closest point to earth so the energy of Sedna is very very slowly increasing as it moves towards Gemini it nips in and nips out sometime around November so Taurus there's so much, as I said earlier, bonkers energy around um, your house and your sign at the moment. But when I say in the channeling, it's just a very rapid, interconnected, like there's a netting or a web across everything. So we're hoping that we'll channel a direction now. For some reason, I think this is going to be a complex frequency Taurus. I feel like everyone is meant to be focused on this energy now because it's the last part of a nodal cycle. So the nodes were in Taurus and Scorpio making lunar and solar eclipses there. But this solar eclipse snuck out and went into Aries earlier than July. So it begins with static, and that's really fascinating. 12, your needs. What are your needs, but your true needs, not your true nodes, your true needs. What are they? What is it that you need to acknowledge within you and open the energy to allow all these frequencies to actually find their space within your energetic field. So before I turn over the other three cards, I'm going to put a ceramic on this. Fail. 30. 
So you've got this energy here of an inner truth that's waiting to come in, but it won't come in until you kind of open yourself to your needs, your needs, not somebody else's, Taurus. You need to understand what it is you require and what you need to call into your world. There's a series, I feel like this is, because of the nodes, this is wormholes, dimensional passageways. And we are right now at the end of a, an eclipse. And we're looking at the sixth after, which is the fifth of the fifth. We're looking at the moment of May post lunar eclipse. I feel like there's a thread being opened portals being opened and the more you understand your needs the more you can kind of open that door and behind that door is another door that you could just walk through but if you open the other door you actually walk through two dimensional thresholds that's this energy somehow of Vesta and Uranus changing your um, it's like a kind of changing your portal that you're heading towards, changing your tapestry that you're moving towards. So what do we have? Three nine. So we've got immediately this energy of a Tesla code. So we've got six six three three nine. So you're opening, recognize your needs, recognize your tune, recognize your truth, recognize your emotions, recognize what you're empathically confused by. And then you have gotten, which is in the last reading as well. So by recognizing your truths, you're understanding what no longer serves a purpose for you in your life so that you can move past that point. And then you've got stankness, Nithogir. So Nithogir is the dragon. There's something here in your energy before the freak, this is all this feels pre-Jupiter. So this feels like this is pre the 17th of May. Give yourself time at the beginning here to prepare yourself for something very large and very rapid to move through. A lot of communication will come into you post the 17th. There's a tremendous, vast, speedy energy being pushed towards you but you just have to make some kind of preparation it's interesting because in the Aries reading it was about waiting yours is about you're running out of time almost to get ready for this there's a whole series of wormholes portals that are opening that you can it's like stacking a whole series of doorways together. You can just have one. If you only want one truth that you, one of your needs fulfilled, just go through that one door. But you can stack many doors and they can all be open and you can actually go through an entire corridor and find yourself in a completely new energetic truth that is not answering, fulfilling your needs. The things you require that you don't voice, the truths you keep secret, they have to come out now. Because Nipple Gear almost wants you, it's like speaking your needs is the key to Nipple Gear opening the final doorway. The gods, the deities that you work with, your spirit team will then open the other door and you can shoot through. So, Mona. I feel like you're sensing that when you've opened to these truths before, you felt slightly hammered down you felt sort of abused 
by speaking those truths. So they have become very much a silence that you don't like to mention. You're being given support. I need to sit into that because at first they were like, I thought of it as being like animism, but this is something spiritual, like a consciousness, like it's almost like the world around you, the fixed earth around you has been talking to you for so long that you've become caught in only their truths and not your own spiritual truth. This is really interesting because it's almost like your body has become too controlling. There's something about body consciousness um, and that's become too controlling and you've almost got to assert your spiritual needs. This is really interesting. It's not about, and that's so fascinating for fixed earth. You would have really thought your reading would have been much more about the body, but this is really about consciousness, not body consciousness, but spiritual consciousness. And somehow you, what's been going on with the spirit and your body has actually made your spiritual truths, your pathways you follow, a bit of a cul-de-sac. And that's why you're needing to reanimate and be open and honest about your truths. So this is about resolving, but there's a kind of a... There's a harshness to how your body will behave. Like a willfulness. Oh, oh so interesting. Like a Taurian stubbornness in your molecules. You've got to really try and transform by lifting outside of your body to consider your needs. Don't consider your needs on what your body's telling you. You need to consider your needs on what you know is your truth. But a truth that has scarred you when you've spoken up about things before. And then with Gutten, you have the Cosmic Magoo. So this, this is kind of energies. I don't know how to describe these. I'm just going to call them the aliens because I keep picking up this pink alien and a kind of purpley lilac alien. And I think they were part of the messaging that was coming from before. And it's uh, Amin Amin who writes, pointed out that my reading yesterday with the Great Attractor had a frequency of Ram's Run and I immediately thought, well done, because... There is something about that movement from one element to another that's taking place here. And there is a nodal shift coming, but at the moment you still own it. So the cosmic lagoo is the ocean and that has the energy of Ram, but Ram in Ram's run stepped onto the earth. She's dropped all of her past life to come into a new energy and yet somehow this is talking about coming into air, coming towards, um, well, I guess Gemini when the sun arrives, the mutable air, because I wanted to say, wanted to begin with Libra and then Aquarius, but it's actually Gemini is the energy that will allow you to move your conscious thoughts and transform them before reinserting yourself into your body. And then you have a surge, a cosmic surge, Perth. So this May, that's this is when Jupiter enters Gemini. Sorry, my brain was wondering whether I wanted to do another line of runes for the post, but uh, we'll go back to the runes at the end. I'm going to the alchemy of astrology. 
because it seems like this is very astrologically connected for you. So, what's going on with the energy of Taurus once Jupiter arrives? Yeah, we'll take that, it's only four. Dragon's blood. <laughs> They're showing, me, they're showing me you killing this moment. <laughs> killing Nithal Gear. Look, Nithal Gear is a kind of barrier challenge and we create the fears that stop it. Nithal Gear is really God deities waiting to open doors for you. But they won't do it if your belief is not strong enough in yourself. And this really is not within your body. This really is spiritual energy. And I'm still finding that Completely fascinating for fixed earth. I just am. So th this card at 78 is saying where the runes end, the healing begins. So what do they mean by that? They mean that when you understand your own truth, your message, then the healing begins. So this is rule breaking, but whose rules are you breaking? Your own. And the discovery of truth, discovery of your needs. But you will feel slightly spiritually destructive during this period. Moon in Virgo comes next, which is trusting life trimmings. Uh, there's something in this card that's talking about a fear you have where if you transform your spiritual journey too much, you will no longer fit into the real world but you're being offered all these doors stacked up so that you can actually go to a new space and be yourself. You are redefining your circumstances. And then you have Pluto. Bismuth. There's something about writing A new, uh, in a new medium. Again, there's hidden truths within this, but it's almost telling you that at the moment you are a form of compressed self. You've actually, you've narrowed your spiritual possibilities by having a particular pathway that you're stuck walking on. And that's why you're being given this stack of doors to move through. Oh. And then you've got the bolt from the blue. You've got the Ophicus, this 13 moon creative frequency. The resurrection of your truth, your needs coming back into you. So you're almost doing a spring clean on your consciousness, because this talks about the thread of divine consciousness, but actually they were taking off the thread and saying, become your divine consciousness, become your nine frequency, find that missing piece. It's not even missing, you're just not seeing it. It's there in front of you somehow. The cosmic serpent will reach down, and that is the, the wormholes that exist, the stankness, the testing. It's almost like you've been testing yourself too much. And this is a moment to step outside, change your consciousness, stack up all the needs into all these doors. Nipple gear will open the back and you will fly through with the dragon's blood that's the energy of coursing through time or dimensions so that just pinged <coughs> three more cards newer this eclipse taking place the sun it's a flower moon this is the card of the blossoming this is a card of the new coding that you're going through, but waiting until the 17th to activate it, but speak it, to call out a peckled shout and attract life to its moment in the sun, your moment in the sun, because it's 
you're in your moment with the sun now, but you've got to take your moment, redefine it while the sun's strengthening your energy and move that into another sign. Move with your truth, move with your resonant frequency and don't only allow it to be your truth when the sun's in Taurus. Then we have the divine spark. It is your moment to begin again. It's 666, six dimensional frequency. So I'm being shown how when the Jupiter moves into Gemini and you trigger this moment of your light shining, remaining shining, and this bolt from the blue, somehow you will start to witness animal spirits you've never met before. And then 49, 13, 13. Actually bearing fruits, apple bearer. Being free of the old body codes because you've transformed your consciousness. It's interesting because in a lot of other ways, the messages have been about allowing your body codes to change, but this is about how you change your consciousness codes. And then you go through this corridor of doors and you will come in and find your body codes have caught up with your consciousness. And that has been a kind of reverse message, but you're working in that direction. Spiritual consciousness, changing your understanding will transform the codes within your body and free you of songs that don't belong. So, Taurus, oh no, hang on, I wanted to put some runes on that. Runes on the runes. So, oh, your now moment, this, this is your now moment. 17th of May is coming towards you. And that's Vervandi. But I am, um, you are your own Vervandi at this point. You have chosen to change your conscious coding and you become Vervandi. You get to go through that corridor of doors. I love this corridor of doors. And then you're coming back to the beginning. You're coming back to the start with Fe, Feo. And this is one. Why did I want that code there of... It was telling me to build a number here. Oh, 17. And I was thinking 71, but it's actually, it's trying to get you to appreciate that you've moved into one seven. The 17th is a moment when your coding, consciousness coding will transform your bodily coding and you will bear fruit. And then we have, oh my goodness, 13, 13, 13, 49, 49, 49. You will bear fruit. This is a really important energy. It's the end of a lunar, it's the end of a nodal cycle and it's been in your sign. It's been trying to transform you. You're now getting ahead and you're doing your own transformation. So, that's just gorgeous, Taurus. We'll see you.